Hey everybody, this is Greg Lewis. Thanks so much for joining our presentation today. Today's presentation is Bollinger Bands 101 and I'm gonna start here in about, I think I'm broadcasting, in about four minutes. Uh, hey, as you're coming on, go ahead and say who you are and where you're coming from. Today's presentation is actually by me. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, mute myself and let you listen to some jazzy tunes for a few minutes while I get set up. And uh, the host today is De Jeff Gibby, so in about 3 minutes and 49 seconds, he'll be coming on to, uh, I'm still not sure I'm broadcasting. Yes, I am. He'll be coming on here in just a second uh, to introduce me, and uh, then we'll start the presentation. So, see you then. Start. Whoops. I'm going to go ahead and kind of kick everything off today. That includes reading a legal disclaimer, introducing the Mr. Greg Lewis, and, uh, and sticking around to ask any questions you guys might have. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get to the legal disclaimer. 
Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the company software plugins. It is not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting using specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who work at the risk in and trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of their software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. So uh, this is a picture of the Mr. Greg Lewis. Uh, we can tell his mic's muted because it, or uh, working because it's not muted. But um, I do want to say about Greg that uh, he has done a very, very good job. Uh, he's in charge of our marketing team and um, he does a lot of our graphic design. So if you get emails uh, from us or if you kind of look at some of the content that he puts together, the splashers for our YouTube, the the artwork, the, if you look at our catalogs, he does all of the design behind that. And I personally think he does a really, really good job of design. I think it's one of the best things that he does. He's also a very good presenter. Um, and um, that's, I think, all I've got to say about Greg. So uh, Gregory, let's go ahead and uh, let's get you on here. Well, thank you so much, Jeff. I'm going to have to... Uh... The way my headset's set up is I can hear my own self in my ear, which is annoying. So uh, thank you so much for the introduction. I'm going to go ahead and click off of you and make myself the presenter, yeah? Just a second, Jeff. Sharing. Okay, and um, just while we're here, I do have right. somebody complaining about audio in the comments in GoToWebinar. If you're in GoToWebinar right now and you can hear, will you please just let me know? Just let's make sure that things are running properly right now. Okay, that goes for YouTube. I can't hear you. We are broadcasting. Okay, good. We're getting yes. Everyone's so, so everyone's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'll Jeff. send Ali some instructions on how to kind of maybe troubleshoot his issues, but it seems like for the most part, everybody's running right now, Brad. All right. Thanks so much, Jeff. All right. Uh, this is not what I wanted to see in my screen. Just a second, please. So let me get set up here. So much to go on. Wow, this is strange. Okay. I believe Jeff already read the legal disclaimer. I have to apologize right off the front about how this all started. Um, you, If you watch any of these presentations, you'll know it comes out of my basement. And what I do is I bring in broadcasters from different parts of the world and kind of conglomerate them all here and then send it out in a simulcast to both uh, GoToWebinar and to YouTube. Unfortunately, when, I, when I'm here doing the presentation myself, for some weird reason, it becomes much more difficult. So I'm doing all the levers and knobs for sound and trying to send pictures back and forth with switchers. Uh, it becomes much more complicated. So I apologize for the rough start. And hey, it's still weird, isn't it? Uh, right now, as a sound check, I want to know, answer me this question. Wherever you are right now, can you get a haircut? Yes. In for no. Yes, I can get a haircut. Yes. In, I cannot get a haircut. I'd like to see the answer to that just to make sure everyone's coming in okay and everyone can hear me okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and pop out this question. Oh, I'm seeing mostly no's. Uh, yes in Tennessee, says Gary. Uh, people on YouTube are not being too responsive. Uh, Jeff, are we sure we're hearing me okay on YouTube? Just give me a yes when uh, you see that when you hear that. All right, Yeah. Uh, so uh, um, how's everyone doing? Again, this is a very strange time. The last time I did a webinar was the last webinar we did in our office in um in our office in here in salt lake city so every single webinar we've done since then has been in my home and i looked at the webinar yesterday and it was so strange because first of all i had short hair and uh it was a whole different situation and a whole different time we had no idea what was ahead of us and things here in our local government are getting better uh by the way i asked the haircut question you can get a haircut here in utah as of about three weeks ago i think but as of yet, uh, I have not, just because I asked the wife what she thinks, and she said, oh, I let it go for a while. So apparently the wifey likes my haircut. Another thing that's uh, problematic about broadcasting in my basement is this morning there's been a fly that's bugging the crap out of me. And so I have this 
electronic yellow fly zapper. So if you see me waving that in the air, that's because I'm trying to get rid of that stupid fly. Uh, all right, so down to business. Today we're talking about, and I have to assume, give me a second, I'm still not, things are not quite operating the way I expect them to. Yeah, there we go. Okay, today, I'm going to change my thing again. Uh, we're going to talk about Bollinger Bands 101. Now, judging by the popularity of the registrants here today, I'm assuming that uh, people really like Bollinger Bands. I would say our registrations were a good 35 to 50 percent more than they typically are, just because I'm assuming it's not because of Greg Lewis. I'm assuming because we said Bollinger Bands 101. So I get the impression he's really popular. And if you haven't heard of Bollinger, John Bollinger and Bollinger Bands after today, I'm sure you'll see why they're so popular and um, why they deserve uh, overviewing. Now, today we're going to be talking, I should point out, this is a 101 situation. Uh, a couple of months ago, we decided, hey, why don't we kind of pull back a little bit, uh, kind of start from the beginning. Don't assume too much upon the people who are listening to our broadcasts. I know when I started here 15 years ago, when people said things like, man, just technical analysis or Bollinger Bands or moving averages or stochastics or RSI, or those things are just, they just assumed we knew what they were talking about and they just flew over my head. So we really wanted to take a second for new traders, people are really just starting out to kind of get acclimated to this. And that's really what today's presentation is all about. So if you already understand things, and this is what we'll be talking about today, uh, what is technical analysis? What is a moving average? What is a standard deviation? What are Bollinger, how are Bollinger Bands calculated? What is volatility? Uh, what is percent B, what bandwidth? What is the squeeze? How do you scan for the squeeze? How do you test for the squeeze? If those are things you already understand and know pretty well, th this might be frustrating for you, but go ahead and stay around. You can always use review. And if you want to, you can just watch the recording and you can scan by this. By the way, we are recording today. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can just come back here and you'll be able to see the recording. If you're watching it on GoToWebinar, just go over to YouTube. Another small technicality, if you're watching this on GoToWebinar, you won't be able to see me. I'm in the corner on the screen. If you're watching it on, on YouTube, you can see me. I would say it's not that necessary to see me during the broadcast, but that's uh, <clears throat> just the difference between watching GoToWebinar and YouTube today. All right. Um, all right, John Bollinger. Man, I have to keep on moving my image around. This is what I told you about being the both the presenter and the controller. So uh, generally speaking, if you watch any presentation about Bollinger Bands and John Bollinger, the first thing people say is, this man needs no introduction. And in fact, if you know anything about technical analysis or even trading, you've probably heard of John Bollinger. Um, but I'm not assuming any knowledge upon anybody today, so I'm going to give him a brief introduction. Uh, you can stop this presentation now and read through all this if you'd like, or just look him up in Wikipedia. Uh, that's John Bollinger, a picture of him right there. He's the president and founder of Bollinger Capital Management. He's a chartered financial analyst, aka CFA, and a chartered market technician, aka CMT. Uh, Bollinger, and this is important, well, Bollinger Bands and related tools have been integrated into most of the ana analytical software and charting platforms currently in use. That's true. You really can't, no matter what brokerage you have or what software you're using, what chart software you're using, you'd be hard pressed to find one that doesn't have at least the basic Bollinger Bands on it. And that's a really big statement. It's really important to understand that John Bellinger is a pioneer in modern technical analysis. His work goes back, I think the Bollinger Bands first started in the, the 80s. He's been around working the business since the 70s. And I also have to add as a side note, he's one heck of a guy. I've had a chance to meet John Joel Bollinger and his family on several occasions. Uh, I don't know what you think a technical analysis an analyst is like, but John Bollinger isn't probably like the ones you're thinking. He doesn't, you know, put his glasses up like this and look down at you. He's just very amiable and a very nice guy as well as and very much a family man and a huge audiophile. So that's John Bollinger. Now, uh, another thing I want to point it out is today's presentation is based largely uh, upon Bollinger on Bollinger Bands, the book. I believe you can still find this in print. This isn't about selling his book, but I did want you to understand that uh, obviously the last word on Bollinger Bands is John Bollinger in his book gives you that. And that's where I got a lot of the information today for this presentation. And I would highly recommend, again, this is going to be a, a 101 
you know, foundation of Bollinger Bands. If you want to learn more, that book is a great source. And I also should mention that even though what we're going to talk about today is fairly fundamental, it can get pretty complicated pretty quick. So if you're a total tech, technical analyst nerd, you'll love Bollinger Bands, Bollinger on Bollinger Bands. All right. And as I mentioned, we're going to start. Oh, I'm sorry. One more thing I forgot to mention before the whole thing started. If you have questions, I'm not really monitoring chat because I sort of, if you can tell, I sort of got a lot going on here. Jeff Gibby, the, the one who introduced us today, he is monitoring chat. So if you have a question, uh, do not hesitate to ask Jeff. And uh, uh, you can do it either on YouTube or on GoToWebinars. And then at the end, we'll have a Q&A for that. So we can just kind of conglomerate all those questions and, and wait till the end. Now, as I mentioned, we're not going to assume any knowledge on you today. Uh, you may be a complete novice and never traded before, so I'm going to try to approach it from that angle. And you may have never heard of Bollinger Bands at all, so again, I'm going to try to approach it from that angle. Um, there's two ways to look at market analysis, two essential ways. That's a fundamental analysis and technical analysis. Fundamental analysis is you study everything in the overall economy that includes, excuse me, you know, industry conditions, financial conditions, and management of companies. If the manager was fired, uh, it's the price earnings ratios, it's earnings, it's, it's economics. If there was a pandemic, let's say, uh, something like that, that fundamental, fundamental analysis sort of looks at that. On the other side, there's technical analysis. Technical analysis in its purest form essentially ignores fundamental analysis. Technical analysis says the uh, stock's price and volume are the only inputs, and the assumption is that all known fundamentals are factored into that price. So you don't have to look outside price and volume. You don't have to look outside a chart. Everything that's happening in the markets is in the charts. And that's essentially the tack we're going to take today. That's essentially the tack we here at Metastock take. We are essentially technical analysis analysts. Uh, within technical analysis, there are four basic different types of indicators. Excuse me, I'm just going to get a little more comfortable here. I'm also looking for my water. Give me a second. Aha! Now, uh, within fundamental analysis, you have trend indicators. These are what they sound like. They uh, basically indicate the strength and direction of a trend. These including uh, moving averages and MACD, which are both lagging. And we're going to talk about lagging and leading in just a second. Then we have momentum. Momentum is the speed of the price movement. How fast is the price going up or down, right? Uh, those include things like stochastic oscillator, which is leading, and an RSI, which is leading. Then we have a uh, volatility. Uh, that is the rate of price movement, and we're going to talk more about volatility in just a second. Uh, volatility is um, to, uh, or to say Bollinger Bands is a volatility indicator. It's really the volatility indicator. I would say that most people, when they think of a volatility indicator, first consider Bollinger Bands, and then there's average true range, and those are both lagging. And then you have volume, and that's the strength of the base of the volume. Volume basically, when you're looking at a chart is how many units, you know, what, how much is being bought and sold rather than the price. All right, now, and when you talk about lagging and leading, uh, lagging is basically telling you what's already been established. And for that reason, it's, it's a more, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? It's a more, um, it's a better indicator. Whereas leading is trying to tell you what has not yet been established for that reason, it's, it's, it's more for forecasting, but it's a little, it's not quite as, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? It's not quite as uh, good <laughs> of an indicator as a lagging indicator. Uh, okay. Now, talking about volatility. Uh, what volatility really is, other than other things, is if you imagine that this is the, the mean price, right? This is the price. No, no price means ever really look like this. But volatility is telling you how far away, imagine these triangles are prices, how far away the prices are from that mean, all right? So just the term volatility gives you an idea of what it means. When things are volatile, they're moving around a lot, right? They're jagged and, and misshapen and going in all directions, to, to, to put it one way. And that's what volatility shows us. Um, and now, so what are Bollinger Bands? Well, we've already mentioned that Bollinger Bands are a measurement of volatility. And this 
is the equation for Bollinger Bands. Now, I don't expect anyone, unless you're a mathematician or a statistician, to really understand this, but essentially it's not that hard once you uh, understand that this is saying Bollinger Bands basically is, whoops, that's not what I want to do. Bollinger Bands is basically um, a, a mathematic con construct of moving average plus or minus two standard deviations. Now, maybe you don't know what that means, so let's talk a little bit about that. Now, try to go back, way back to when you were in school and you studied things like statistics. Statistics, statistics are actually a pretty important subject when it comes to technical analysis because technical analysis, outside of Bollinger Bands, a lot of technical analysis um, relies on moving averages. And let's talk about what an average is, moving averages and standard deviations for a second. Um, again, this is a one-on-one -on -one thing, so if this is something you already know, you, you just be patient, we'll move moving on in just a moment. Uh, so this is a bell curve. This is a very, very typical bell curve. Um, imagine, if you will, here at the x-axis, these are people who own TVs, right? How many TVs are in a household? So let's say the middle here is four TVs. And out the edge here is 10 TVs, and on the edge here, for those poor souls who choose not to watch television or don't have one, there's zero TVs, all right? And you'll see, as you go through maybe the population of America, that the average person probably has about four or five TVs, and that's what's represented here in this middle line, right? Uh, if you're richer, you're going to have seven or eight TVs in your household. And if you're Bill Gates, maybe you have 50 TVs in your household. But that's, that's an outlier, isn't it? That's way out here. Very few people have that many TVs. And honestly, very few people in the United States, involuntarily, have no TVs. So... This gives us an idea of what's going on. And a standard deviation, this is one or two, shows you when we'll, well, when we're talking about seven or eight TVs, this is how many devi this is how deviant we are from the mean, right? This is the mean, this is where most people are. You're we're talking about seven or eight TVs, this is how far outside you are of that. Right? And if you're way out here, you're an outlayer. Or for even anywhere in here, you're sort of an outlayer. Okay? Now I tell you that to tell you this. Let's go ahead and open up Metastock and Bollinger Bands. Oh, that's not what I wanted to open right away. Give me just a second. I have to restart Metastock now. No, I don't. There it is. Okay. Um, and again, I excuse me, since I'm having to pull this on another monitor, I'll probably endlessly times have to pull different parts of Metastock back onto the other monitor. I appreciate your patience on that matter. Now, here's a basic chart. Uh, again, I'm assuming anybody that's watching this understands what's going on in a basic chart. These are bars. They show the uh, low, high, uh, low, low, excuse me, open, high, low, and close. Open, high, low, close. And this particular chart, I believe, is Apple. Yes, it's Apple. Now, uh, just looking at this chart, you can kind of see where things are going, right? You can see the basic trend. You can see that basically things are down here. Basically, things continue to go up here despite the pandemic. Um, and the first thing I'm going to add to this chart is the first part of Bollinger Bands, which is a moving average. So let's just, by the way, this is a good point to, time to point out in Metastock, you've got a whole variety of indicators, as you can see here on my pull down list. Now, you may or may not have all these indicators if you have Metastock. Some of them are from optional add ons, and some of them are built in. First thing I'm going to show you is just a moving average, which is absolutely built into Metastock, and all you do is you grab it here and you throw it down on the chart. And the first thing it's going to ask you is, well, how long of a moving average, what type of moving average do you want to do, and do you want it to be a simple or exponential or weighted moving average? Now, as far as Bollinger Bands is concerned, the default moving average for Bollinger Bands is 20 periods. In this case, that's 20 days because this is a daily chart, and he also uses a simple method rather than exponential. An exponential uh, weighted uh, moving average puts more weight toward more recent prices. It's a little more sensitive, but Bollinger says as a default, and we're going to be talking about defaults today, go ahead and use 20 moving averages. Now, when you put a moving average on a chart, you can automatically see why technical analysis analysts use it so much, because it sort of smooths things out, right? And you can kind of see why that's the case, right? Because what you're doing is you're saying, okay, for the last 20 periods, which let's say is this much, this point here is an average of the last 20 days. When the next bar loads, it's going to be an average of the last 20 days minus that day back here. So it continually moves 20 days at a time. 
Another thing a moving average does for you is it kind of, not kind of, it absolutely tells you the trend. You know if a moving average is going up, that's the trend of that particular security. So moving average in and of itself tells you a lot. And you'll see moving averages all the time on MACDs, on just about anything uses moving averages. They'll 200 day moving averages, 50 day moving averages, nine day moving averages. They're all, all over the place. But Bollinger Band uses the 20 day moving average. Okay. Uh, one more thing we're going to add on to Bollinger Bands to make them Bollinger Bands, as you mentioned, as I mentioned before, is the, the two standard deviations in each direction. And again, it's asking you, well, what time period do you want to do? And do you want it to be simple? I'll say yes, because again, that's John Bollinger's default. So now things are getting a little more interesting. Now remember we showed that chart, the bell chart before, and it showed you uh, what was averaged in the middle and what was sort of an outlayer and what was sort of out of bounds of the outlayer or the two standard deviations. Well, that's what's going on here, right? Here you can see everything's sort of close to the mean. All these prices are pretty close to the mean. So the Bollinger Bands are pretty compressed, right? Uh, there's not a lot of volatility going on there. As things start to break out in this extreme example, you can see that this price is in fact an outlayer, right? It's out, completely outside the Bollinger Bands. Now, that's going to tell you a few things. One's going to tell you uh, it could, if it continues to go, it could break out. But more often than not, things are going to, things are going to sort of go back, revert back to the mean. That's a statistical, um, it's just reality of stats. When thing, things tend to want to go revert back to the mean, they want to kind of head back towards the mean. That's why people, again, watch these uh, moving averages so closely. And as, as, as the as I just said, things do tend to go back. Once they become an outlier, they still tend to pull back. So that tells you a lot right there. This tells you, hey, you know, because if you're looking at this without the Rollinger Bands, you're not sure, is this an outlier or not? It's kind of far away, but I don't know. But now that you've got the Bollinger Bands there, you know that this is definitely higher than high. This is an out of the ordinary high price, right? I'm sorry, I can give you a little better example of how that works with this. Okay. All right, now let's go back to my presentation. So I just listened to a presentation by John Bolger a few days ago, and he made his audience repeat this phrase. He said, what are the two most important concepts of Bollinger Bands? He literally made them say this. He said, the prices are high at the upper Bollinger Band, and prices are low at the lower Bollinger Band. That's a fundamental fact that he wants you to understand when you're looking at Bollinger Bands. He needs you to understand that when they're above, they're up here, they're high. When they're down here, they're low. That might sound fundamental, but that's something that John Bollinger wants you to really understand. And again, that's why the standard deviations or the two standard deviations, plus or minus, are so important because they show us, again, if we're surpassing or not surpassing what we, we would consider high or low. Now let's on one more. Let's see, make sure I'm in the right place. Okay, so we haven't really shown you what I mean, we've shown you some things about Bollinger Bands, but we haven't shown you any indicators, bio sale indicators or anything like that yet. So let's show you about two of the fundamental indicators that John Bollinger has come up with that uh, rely on Bollinger Bands. The first is percent %B. I don't know why I made it so small up here in the corner, but this is percent %B. Uh, its calculation is the difference of the last and lower band and the, uh, the last, I should say the last price, uh, the last close in the lower band, and the di uh, divided by the difference of the upper band and the lower band. And this tells you where you are in relation to Bollinger Bands. By the way, I should have capitalized Bollinger Bands. My apologies to Mr. Bollinger. So if we go back to Metastock. Now, I should mention that everything I've shown you up to this point, you can do yourself in Metastock, and it requires no additional uh, optional software or anything. What I'm about to show you from now on does require additional software. And at the end of the presentation, I'll show you how you can get that. In fact, I'll, if you want to wait, I'll show you a really, really good deal on how to get that. Uh, but if you want to calculate percent B, all you have to do, or I should say show it on the chart, is go here, pull this down, and throw it down here. And again, it's a 20 period default, so we'll just say yes, 20 period default. Now what we see going on here is basically, as he mentioned, it shows you what's going on with Bollinger Bands. So it's a zero to one spectrum, right? This is zero and this is one. And any time you see this going above one, it's showing you that there are outliers. There are things going, you know, as we mentioned, you can see in the chart above here, 
it's relating with that. But this shows you how much, right? So he says if it goes 0.1, that's 10%. If it goes uh, 0.2, 1.2, that's 20%. So this is 20% above what we'd expect that chart to be. That's how far away it's moving from uh, the, the standard deviant path. And the same over here. This is showing you 0.3. Uh, that's really, you know, so this one's really quite, quite out of, out of the... Uh, and the standard deviation. And uh, this is ahead of what we're talking about, but John also points out that when you see these W patterns, those are things, interesting things you wanna watch for, okay? So that's essentially the percent B indicator. Now the next one I wanna show you is bandwidth. And bandwidth is trademarked. I have no idea how Mr. Bollinger trademarked bandwidth because it seems like a fairly generic term, maybe in the 80s. Bandwidth wasn't a very popular term, but somehow he's trademarked it. It is, in fact, trademarked bandwidth. Now, bandwidth, uh, excuse me, just checking a couple things. All right, bandwidth is the upper band uh, subtracted by the lower band, or excuse me, the difference of the upper band and the lower band divided by the middle band. And that's just showing you how wide the Bollinger Bands are. So let's go back and show you that. And I'm just sort of building up a chart that you might use when you're using Bollinger Bands to uh, analyze your security. Now, uh, where is it? Bandwidth. Nope, that's not bandwidth. There it is. I'm going to throw that down here. And again, 20 period default. And it has a reference period of 125, and I'll show you what that means in a second. Now, here at the bottom on bandwidth, you can see that uh, there's troughs, what he calls peaks, and troughs, right? And also, you see an extension here. This is basically, this line here is just showing you the last peak, and it extends out 125 periods. So until it, uh, it's just showing you that you haven't, you know, here exceeded that last peak, is essentially what I'm saying. Now, when there's a peak, that is telling you, oh, let's go back actually to the definition really quick. Oh, no, let's not do that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, when there's a peak, it's showing you that there's an expansion. And when there's a trough, it's showing you that there's a contraction of the bowl and bands. And I'll tell you in just a minute why that's important. Uh, you can see that, even though you can see that here, it's just an easier visual process here. You can see the, the troughs really easily and the peaks really easily. Okay, now I have one more thing to show you. I want an indicator I'm going to add to this chart, and that is called normalized volume. Now, again, what we described volume as, well, I'll define it. It's volume compared to an, uh, a certain day's average. So if I open up the chart, if I just put normal volume on here, right, I think most of us know what volume is. Again, it's just how many units are being traded at any given time and I'm just gonna put a regular volume on the chart. Now you can see this is what we assume is high volume. There's a lot going on here, a lot along with a pretty uh, high uh, price action. Um, generally speaking, the reason you're watching volume is when there's a lot of volume, there's probably something going on. When there's no volume or little volume, there's really not a lot going on. Even though if there might be some price action, that just nothing's getting bought and sold, right? That's what volume tells you. So this is important information, but I mean, what's high and what's low compared to what the other things that we're looking at in Bollinger Bands, right? Is this high? I don't know. It seems high. Is this low? It seems low. Well, that's where normalized volume comes in. That's where he, let's get rid of this one. That's where he com, uh, compares it to a, a moving average. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I know everyone in the world right now can see it but me. There it is. I guarantee you everyone watching saw that before I did. <laughs> okay, let's do it on a 50-day moving average. Apparently that's the default. Now this doesn't look like narrow volume because he hasn't done it as a histogram, but that's easy enough to change in Metastock. You can just double click on double click on that, change the window properties, and change it to a histogram. And that's how most people view volume. So that's how I'm gonna do it right now. Now you can see the histogram based on the 50-day moving average and and uh, according to Mr. Bollinger, this is telling you, well, this is relatively high volume. This is relatively normal volume, everything going along here. And when you start getting down here, it's even uh, considered low volume. 
And I know that in other charts I've seen that Mr. Bollinger does, he actually lies up uh, two averages to show you high, middle, and low, but that's not what's going on in this particular indicator. Oh, okay, so there's a lot going on in the chart now. Uh, basically, we can see a bunch of different ways to tell you when the uh, prices are high and when they're low and when there's expansion on the Bollinger Bands and when there's contraction on the Bollinger Bands. And that leads me to the next topic, methods that Mr. Bollinger uses for trading. There are four methods that John Bollinger uses for trading. Uh, today we're going to talk primarily, or really just about the first method. The first method is called method one and it's called volatility breakout, AKA the squeeze. If you've heard anything about Bollinger Bands or even taken a slight interest in Bollinger Bands, you've probably heard of this particular um, method. Now, as it says here, it anticipates high volatility, taking advantage of the cyclical nature of volatility. That is to say, when volatility is low, you expect it to go high, when it's high, you expect it to go low. That's just a thing. Um, he says, perhaps, and this is his words, he says, perhaps the most elegant direct application of Bollinger Bands is a volatility breakout system. Okay, if I've got another, yeah. So there's two things in the squeeze. You have the squeeze, or the, the squeeze and the bulge. So the squeeze is a trough in the bandwidth. Remember we had the bandwidth on the chart, and when we saw a trough, that was showing that there was a squeeze or a, a contraction of Bollinger Bands. Uh, that forecasts increased volatility, and in Mr. Bollinger's own words, it's where trends are born. When you have a bulge, that's a peak in the bandwidth. It's a forecast for decreased volatility, and again, that's where trends go to die. So let's look at that again in Metastock. All right, um, you can see here, even at a glance, look at this line, that when you've got a peak, there is a relative bulge. I don't know if this is the best example to show you that. Let's see if I can. So here we can see, okay. So here you can see when there's a, a trough down here, you know, a dip in, in the bandwidth, that, that means there's a relative um, co contraction of Bollinger Bands. And when there is a peak, that is when there's a relative expansion of Bollinger Bands. And you can see, generally speaking, what Mr. Bollinger has said is essentially true. When there is a, a small expansion, 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 when it breaks, there's a little bit of a run in one direction. And then once it, pop, 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 here, contraction, contraction, contraction. Well, this isn't a, oh, here we go. There's a break, there's a bulge, and it breaks in the other direction. So that's essentially what Bollinger Bands and the squeeze tells us. Now there's a lot going on in this chart and I'm gonna show you something right now that's gonna make this a lot easier. Um, and that is a template. Uh, now again, I should point out one more time that everything up here in this upper chart is something that you can get with Metastock. If I'm honest, you can get it with any software. Any software can provide this information. It's not hard to get. Like I said, it's a very universal. But when you get to the Bollinger Band tool, uh, excuse me, the percent B, and the Bulger Band Toolkits and some of the other functions I'm gonna show you right now, those are primarily only available in optional software like Bollinger Band's Toolkit, which is available for Metastock. Um, and let me show you one of the great things about that. Oh, excuse me, I was, <laughs> template is what I keep on trying to pull up. So uh, what Metastock does is it has templates. A template is a way to quick, see how I built this chart? And I can save that chart as a template if I want to, uh, my own template. Uh, you could save a template any way you want in Metastock. They also have templates that come as part of different um, systems we have that come built in as also additionally. And this is the Bollinger Band uh, Method 1 template. I'm gonna apply it here, okay. Let's get rid of this guy. Now, oh dear, I must have, let me do that again because I think I accidentally erased some stuff. Okay, method one, apply. Okay. Okay, so now you can see we've got a lot of the same things going on, but there's a little more, um, uh, what I to say, color, color interaction, visual things to make you kind of see easier what's going on. For instance, right here, you could see 
that this S is telling you, yes, a squeeze is in fact going on here. Mr. Bulgin doesn't really specify specifically how many days of contraction or exactly what a contraction is to be a contraction, but in his software here, it does tell you what he would consider to be the beginning and end of a contraction. That's what's shown here by this S, that's showing a squeeze. These Bs here indicate a bulge. You can see these Bs here indicate a bulge, and that's concurrent with the big bulge you can see in, in the uh, Bollinger Bands. And down here you can see you have the bandwidth, which once again, it's color-coded now. Yeah. So you can see you've got uh, a mountain or a peak, I guess you'd say, and that's where you have an expansion. And then you see you've got a trough, which has, um, or a, yeah, a trough, which is showing a constriction. Now, the great thing about Metastock, and I should mention, you know, like I said, John Bollinger's available in a lot of software platforms, but the great thing about Metastock is uh, you might be saying to yourself, well, how can I find uh, securities that are currently showing a squeeze? Because that's what I'm interested, right? A squeeze. So let's go ahead and show you that. I don't know why I'm getting out of here. I want to stay in here. So in Metastock, you may or may not be aware, you can go to the Explorer. Now, what the Explorer allows you to do is take any of the systems. You can do more than one system if you'd like, uh, or you can just do one. In this case, I did the Bollinger Band Toolkit to uh, squeeze. And today, because remember, uh, it's it's measuring uh, contracted volatility. Well, it turns out right now the markets are fairly volatile. So so that's a more of a white unicorn than it normally would be. So I did a, a, a test on 4,000 all the U.S. optionable stocks, and that takes a second. So I did it before the before the presentation started. And here's the report that I got. What this report shows you is the date that it had the squeeze started, the close on that, the bandwidth number, uh, whether it was a squeeze, one would be a squeeze, there would be no squeeze, so they're all gonna say one, of course. Uh, you can you can uh, check on the percent B. Now remember, if it's above one, that shows that the um, the price was above where you would expect the two standard deviations to be. If it's below uh, five, I think, 0.5, it's below. So that that this is a way you can go ahead and, and um, sort on that stuff. Uh, to find out more what you're looking for. Now, clearly, I could open up these. Uh, again, I'd like to state, these are all uh, tested about an hour before this meeting uh, in U.S. optionable stocks, places where the squeeze has taken place. And there's, what, 47 of them? So that's a pretty slick part of Metastock on any level. Anytime you want to know or you're trying to find an indicator, something you're in interested in, or multiple things you're interested in, you can always do a scan in Metastock and pull that up. And that's one of the great things about Metastock. And it's one of the power tools. And it's one of the things we really enjoy about Metastock. And so do our customers. Now you're saying to yourself, well, okay, I could start looking at these uh, one by one, uh, which would not be a bad thing to do. But another great thing about Metastock is you can do testing. Now, uh, back testing, again, this is a one-on-one -on -one class, so I don't want to assume anybody knows uh, things. Backtesting is basically you're saying, if I had a system and I had applied it to a certain security or group of securities over a certain amount of time, how would it have performed over that time? So it's just a test. It's a back test. Back test over time. And uh, the great thing about Metastock is you, you can test on, um, well, in this case, we're, gonna, we're doing the test on method one. Remember, method one was essentially the squeeze. Um, and I did the, And you can do that on the last exploration results, which is very convenient in Metastock. And I can just say sys and test. And it should just take a second. Actually, I could have just shown you the report for the test I'd already done. That would have been the smart thing to do, but this should just take a second. See, it's telling you down here what the rate of the, okay, here we go. And you can view the results. Now, some of you may be familiar with this concept. Um, what we have here is a list of all of the securities tested against the MACD and they're sorted in different ways, and this is by net profit. So over that time period, and I'm sorry I didn't review the time period, I don't recall what time period, I think it was five years, this was how things turned out depending on the security. This one didn't do too great in net profits, this one did pretty well. And you can see right here, I'm trying to get my picture out of the way, let's get my dumb picture out of the way. You can see right here that uh, these are sortable by different Things. You know, the percent gain, net profit, uh, the average percent, the trade profitability, the, how many trades were made during that time period. So those are all things you could be interested in before you even get into uh, this, the test. 
But another thing you can do is just double click on any one of these and it gives you a report. And that report is very useful. There's a whole bunch of stuff these reports tell you. But this one report tells you that this, wow, the profit on this particular trade would have, oh, um, I should have shown you the parameter. I, I, I beg your pardon, this is my bad. The test was if you had $100,000 in equity and you were willing to uh, risk 20% of that equity and make trades long and short based on when you were told to do to, so by the squeeze. That's the test. I should have shown you the particulars before I ran the test. Uh, 145,000. Is that 14,000 or 145,000? 145,000. Uh, if you just would have bought a hold, that would have been negative 13,000. So that's an extreme example, and uh, but a good example uh, of how the system tester shows you how things can do over time. And now one thing to look at is the equity curve. The equity curve on this isn't fantastic. Typically when you want an equity curve, you want growth, growth, growth. I know you don't want your drawdowns like this. You want more growth, 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 growth. In reality, if you'd been testing this, you may have gotten down here and said, well, I'm out, right? You may not have been had the strength of holding, but you see, generally speaking, it's done pretty well. So that's what a Metastock test can do for you. And uh, you can also test the thing specifically we're talking about today, which is Bollinger Bands. All right. Now, I think... Oh, talk about that. Okay. This is probably a good time for me to put my headset on and ask Jeff if we have any questions. Jeff, are you there? I am. I just was thinking it might be a good time to put my headset back on. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. We do have a we do have one question that's coming in from a pop in GoToWebinar. He wants to know when a Bollinger Band squeeze occurs, does it matter where the stock price is within the band level? I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? I was distracted by something going on on my other screen. You know, knobs, yeah. levers. Sure. Uh, when a BB squeeze occurs, does it matter where the stock price is within the band level? Uh, I'm going to answer no. The quick answer is that because you can. it just matters where the price is going to be. Well, if I'm honest, I don't know the answer to that question because you could – I've got to get this headphone because I'm talking in my ear – you could assume that if the price is outside of, you know, if it's an outlier, that they could be showing that there's going to be a break in a direction one way or the other, and it could show that it's going to snap back farther. So uh, I don't know for sure that the answer to that is yes, but I'm going to guess the answer to that is yes. If it's outside of the Bollinger Bands, that would uh, probably show that there's going to be more of a, a snap back in the other direction or breakout. Jeff, do you agree with that summar summarization? I guess the, the, the theory I'd have is when you're looking at a squeeze, um, you're looking for a contraction and you're looking for the, 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 the by definition, you're looking for the bands to get much narrower. Um, and so the only reason where it matters in the bands is because it might give you a clue on whether you're going to have a breakup or a breakdown, but you're looking for that break to happen. So um, that's kind of the way I would read it. Generally, you're, when you're talking about where it is and within the bands, you're going to be talking about a narrowed range, and that's the most important thing. And then you're just looking for whether it's going to break up or break down, and that's where position matters, at least the way I look at it. And, and you know, we're not Sean. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're not. <laughs> oh. uh, Sanjay wants to know if you have any particular important pointers on how to interpret volume. It's, it, any important what on interpreting volume? Um, he just, well, I mean, he actually, all he said was how to interpret volume. Well, as I mentioned, and I'm going to take my headset off because I'm hearing my own voice in my head and drives me nuts. So as I mentioned, uh, volume is important for a lot of reasons. Generally, if there's a lot of volume, that means there's a lot of trade action going on, and that probably means there's more occurring and price will re uh, respond as a result of that. Specifically in what we talked about today, we have normalized volume and that's where John is saying, it, we only he only showed one line through normal, uh, one uh, moving average today on that one example, but I know in other examples he'll put two. And that, as I mentioned before, gives you an idea if volume is really above normal or below level normal by looking at that 50-day um, moving average. And that is the balance of the questions, Mr. Lewis. Okay. Uh, Satish says, hi. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so, Jeff, you know, if I, uh, I don't know if I should mention this to all of our friends, but I've noticed that YouTube's not getting a lot of action, and that is because I forgot to turn YouTube on to the public today. 
So yeah, we we noticed just that now, internally. I apologize. You're just now able to get onto YouTube, but of course, uh, despite that, that's still being recorded. It always was being recorded on YouTube. So if you're watching this right now on GoToWebinar and you want to go back and watch it on YouTube, you can. If you're watching this just now on YouTube, I apologize. We it was on per se, but it wasn't uh, exposed to the public uh, in the way that it should have. I guess I was a little nervous getting ready for my presentation this morning. All right, uh, this is a great time to talk about uh, what I've just mentioned a few times in the presentation, which is John Bollinger's Bollinger Band Toolkit. And Jeff, I'm going to take my headset off so I won't be able to hear you for a second. All right, Bollinger Band Toolkit is um, 2.0, is the latest release of a John Bollinger's toolkit for Metastock. Uh, again, the way I would put this is if you read this book, and I highly recommend you do read this book, and if you're at all a fan of Bollinger Bands, really you need to read this book. Just about everything this book covers, and it's a fairly complex book, is in Bollinger Bands toolkit. And I'm going to flip over right now to a website we have dedicated to it. Oh, that didn't work. Okay. So uh, this is Bollinger Band's Toolkit 2.0 for Metastock. Now what it includes is a lot of things I already showed you today. Uh, you remember I talked, I said that there are four methods um, in Bollinger Band's uh, general systems. One is the uh, volatility breakout we already discussed. Then method two is a trend following system. Method three is a reversal system. And method four is a simple pattern based approach. These are all great methods that uh, I would really implore you to, to learn more about. Uh, as well, John Bollinger has more indicators than the two we discussed. He actually has quite a few. Uh, a lot of them are based on the indicators we discussed today, but a lot of them are wholly different. And they're uh, indicators that really uh, you ought to have in your toolkit if you're interested in Bollinger Bands. Uh, within Bollinger Bands Toolkit, uh, we have expert advisors for method one, two, three, and four. And you'll remember when I say expert advisor, remember when I right clicked on the chart and I showed, oh, <laughs> I never showed you the expert advisor. Let's go back to that really quick. Oh my gosh. I'm just, okay. So let's look really quick look at it, what an expert advisor looks like on the screen. So this is what an expert advisor does to a chart. I should say I showed the expert advisor, but I didn't show you the commentary. And I think that's kind of important. So expert advisor gives you more information, right? It tells you more things. If you right-click on that, you can get a commentary. We have commentaries for almost all of our expert advisors. And that commentary gives you more information. Oh, got to drag it over. Sorry, it's on my other screen. So you see this commentary now. Um, you, you can't really see it right here. Click right. See that little carrot right there? Whatever day or period that carrot is over is what is represented here in the commentary. So right now this commentary is saying, hey, this current trend is bullish. It tells you a suggested long position. It tells you a suggested, uh, excuse me, a Bollinger stop, a chandelier stop. It tells you that Apple is currently in a squeeze pattern. Low volatility reflects tight competition between buyers and sellers, blah, blah, blah. I don't mean blah, 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 like it's not important, but blah, 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 that I don't want to read it all right now. And then uh, it tells you about method one and it has a delightful picture of Mr. Bollinger. So, um, Generally, commentaries are great for all the systems we have in Metastock. Specifically for this one, it tells you all the things that we discussed and where they are happening in the chart. So I apologize I neglected to tell you about that. All right. Uh, other things, you have explorations. Remember I showed you you could scan on things in Metastock? Well, with Bollinger, Band 2, Bollinger Bands Kit 2.0, you can scan for methods 2, 3, and 4, as well as other things, and you can test on many of the things we talked about. Remember, we talked about backtesting, so it allows you to backtest. Again, uh, you can get the basic Bollinger Band stuff just with Metastock as it is, right out of the box, but in order to get all these additional things, that does require Bollinger Band Toolkit. And today, I'm pleased to tell you, you can get the Bollinger Band Toolkit. It is, it is a subscription product. You can get three months for the price of one. That is $49. Now, uh, to my way of thinking, that's a great price if you just want to try this for three months um, uh, because, uh, again, we only touched on what Bollinger Bands can do. And it would be hard, you'd be hard pressed in an hour to tell you all the things that Bollinger Bands can do. So this is a great opportunity for you to really see and experiment yourself with what Bollinger Bands can do at really a minimal, a minimal cost. As well, if you don't have Metastock, I know many people say they do, but if you don't have Metastock, 
uh, you can get a uh, again three months for the price of one you can get Metastock daily charts which is our end of day Metastock product or you can get Metastock real time which is our um, real time Metastock product uh, basically the difference is Metastock end of day uses data link which is a end of day data product and Metastock real time uses Zenith which is a real time data and news project which is wow by the way the the, the getting to get Metastock real time and Zenith for that price is astounding for three months. So I highly recommend you check it out. To go there, you go to metastock.com slash John Bollinger A. That is metastock.com slash John Bollinger A. I also neglected to put this in a slide, but you can call our representatives at 800. Well, maybe there's a number right here. Yep, you can call us at 800-252-9901. Or you can chat with our representatives at uh, metastock.com slash sales chat. One word, metastock.com slash sales chat. Now, I'm going to put my headset back on. How's it going, Jeff? Good. We do have a couple more questions. Oh, let's hear them. Uh, oh, well, the first is a comment. Satish says the squeeze trade is excellent. Thank you, Satish. Um, I concur. James wants to know what book. And I oh, was going to show my I got right here. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. I just remember that people on GoToWebinar can't see my screen or my picture. So let me go back to where the book was. I've got it right here. Bollinger Bands. Bollinger on okay. Bollinger Bands. Oh, well, okay. I've also got it here. It's Bollinger, on <laughs> Bollinger Bands. I guess they didn't need to see the cover. Um, All right. Which... And I, I, Jeff, do they still offer a discount on this book when they get Bollinger Bands Toolkit? Um, that is a good question, and I believe the answer is no. <laughs> I think well, again, uh, I think, we're, we're I think not trying to hawk books here today, but I did want to explain to you that it's an important uh, aspect of learning about Bollinger Bands, and of course, it's the uh, you know, it's the last word on Bollinger Bands because it's John Bollinger on Bollinger Bands, if, and there's several editions, I, I believe. If I remember correctly, the relationship that had changed with their publisher a bit, and they couldn't offer the discount, but I'm going off of memory here. So, well, if you go to Amazon and type in Bollinger on Bollinger Bands, um, I'm sure you can find it at a reasonable price. All right, uh, uh, Jeff, Paul anything else? Yeah, Paul Raskin wants to know: Do you have a more advanced webinar on this subject, like VB102? Oh, so yeah, if you go to Metastock or youtube.com slash metastock and you select our videos and then you're searching once you select videos there's a search bar at the top i guess i could show you this but i don't think i need to uh then you know you're searching for videos within our youtube if you've never gone i will show you that really quick give me just a second uh while you're looking that up greg what should they do while they're particularly on our channel can you say it again jeff while you're uh while you're getting there uh what should what should viewers do while they're at our Metastock channel on YouTube? Well, let me show you. Oh, they should subscribe. Oh, Jeff, you're good. You're good. I, I think they, that we should encourage them to like, um, subscribe, and comment on any videos that they like because it really yeah, does help with the YouTube. So algorithm. here's our YouTube channel. It has a whole, excuse the expression, crap ton of videos, just tons and tons. Um, if I click on videos, actually, and that's what we do. When you go there, then you click it. And this is a little different view than you're going to see because I am the administrator. But you'll see all kinds of videos. And the best thing you can do is go right here and hit this little guy that says look up and say Bollinger Bands. Bands. And here is everything we have that's ever been done about Bollinger. Look, there's one Jeff Gibby. We did Bollinger Bands two years ago, a presentation on that. Uh, we have many presentations by Mr. Bollinger himself, and you can check those out. He's a great so, guest. Uh, I love having him. I should, I should invite John on. Uh, it's been a while. It has been a uh, while. He is. I noticed, Jeff, the last time he was here was, a, well, this is a year ago. No, this is, I thought it was two years ago, but this is, it was just a year ago. So. All right. Well, maybe, uh, maybe you'll see John in the room uh, coming up. Uh, well, I have to mention, Jeff, you did mention that Dorit, uh, John's uh, wife, had seen that we were doing this, and that scared me to death. And the thought of John Bollinger actually watching any of this uh, petrifies me. So if he did, I don't want to know. Okay. I'll just put it out there. Well, that way. 
I did look. Uh, I did look to see if Dorit was in the room. I did not see her logged in. So okay. uh, John might have been. <laughs> oh, and I, I am just glancing, uh, glancing, I can't talk, glancing at chat. And James mentions that you can get uh, the book on Kindle for thirty-one bucks. So mm -hmm. He also said you did a great show. Oh, hey, I think uh, yes. I think that's what he said. He might have. He might have said great shot, but I, it was great, or it's the worst things I've ever seen. One of those two. Uh, uh, Paul wants to know how long the three for month, three for one discount is going to be. I can't tell you for exactly. I can tell you at least till the end of the month. That page comes and goes. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have a specific. Uh, we just brought it up for this particular event, so I would say at least by the end of the month. Wait, this month? Wait, no, the end of the next month probably. This month is only a few more days. So. Yeah. Any other questions? That's the end of the questions. Yeah. All right. Uh, not that well, I'm sorry, Jeff. Anything else? No, no. I think we're okay. done here, Greg. Okay. Well, I'm going to take my headset everybody. off, and I won't be able to hear you anymore, and I won't be able to hear my own stupid voice. Hey, uh, thanks again so much for joining us today. We really do appreciate it. My apologies to the folks on YouTube who missed a lot of this because I didn't have it published. But if you go to YouTube right now, you will be able to see this presentation recorded. If you missed anything, you can go ahead and rewind back. If you're listening to this on GoToWebinar right now and you want to see this, that's a good place to go. Uh, thank you all so much again. Uh, have a great day. Uh, stay safe in this strange pandemic time and successful trading.